Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and uh, this is a special episode, and I'll be doing two dinosaurs today, and uh, the dinosaurs that we'll actually be talking about is Incisosaurus and Irritator. And since the... <clears throat> and these are kind of uh, funny named dinosaurs, so let's actually start with uh, Incisosaurus. Incisosaurus is actually... Uh, <clears throat> in Greek, is actually, is actually for incisor lizard. And uh, it's found in Asia in early Cretaceous, 125, 130 million years ago. And it's three feet long and probably in the range of probably say five, between five to 15 pounds. And uh, the interesting thing about this dinosaur is actually it's a plant eater, and it's and it walks on two legs. Of course, it's a bipedal animal and um, clawed hands. And uh, very interesting about this dinosaur is actually it has these it has these weird looking teeth at the front, and uh, and it's and there's a reason why it's called the bug to the bug tooth lizard, it, it, the buck tooth dinosaur, excuse me. And it's and it's kind of funny. You see, when you look at it, it kind of kind of almost looks like a like it just kind of looks like a dork like a dork looking dinosaur. It kind of almost looks like a dorky looking dinosaur, but even though it's actually kind of an interest, very interesting kind of dinosaur, and it's that it's a different evolutionary step uh, for a certain type of species of dinosaurs. Since this is actually a dinosaur, it is actually that its relatives used to be carnivorous, so it probably would have been closely related to the Salurosaurs. So that would have probably been the family that would actually kind of belong to. And, um, <clears throat> and since that this dinosaur is, a, is actually a plant eater, it probably was an evolutionary step toward the weird-looking uh, bird-like dinosaurs called oviraptors. So they're probably going to be the they're probably an ancestor to the oviraptors, since this is an, lived in the early Cretaceous in China. So probably so it's a, it's a very rare dinosaur. So it's kind of like relatively new and, and to into science, but even though it's it's kind of in the, into pop culture for a little bit, it was actually in the show uh, Prehistoric Park that Nigel Marvin actually did on Animal Planet. It was in the episode uh, Bird uh, Birdhouse, which is actually where Nigel Marvin looks for uh, the Microraptor, and uh, and you kind of and you kind of see that it's that Nigel's kind of playing around with it at first, you know, thinking like what it, what it might be its behavior might have been, but you see it's actually feathered, and the uh, fossils have been found to actually the fossils of insides of a source were pro, what it actually did have feathers on them. So, but they weren't probably and they probably weren't used for flight, so they were probably just mainly for display, and and so that's probably what their main what their main use is for. And uh, since this dinosaur is kind of relatively new, uh, it probably, I don't really have that much information about this dinosaur, so, I would, but even though I would actually say the extinction of this dinosaur is probably due to, like, different, the different uh, climate changes that are actually around, but also China at that time was actually, vol was actually tectonically active, and when it, what that means, it was, vol there were volcanoes uh, around that, around those areas, and you see, and uh, when you actually look at the the fossils of it, the the layer of rock that actually in size of a source was actually found, it was actually found in like uh, the deposits where you actually might find Microraptor. You would actually find um, like uh, Mei Long, uh, Guan Long, D Long. Uh, but I think well, Guan Long and D Long are actually more uh, Jurassic. If my mistake about that, but. Um, but they actually did ha happen to have like different kinds of dinosaurs in that area, and it's a volcanic ash kind of like rock layer. So these dinosaurs are just basically buried uh, in like feet upon feet of ash, and it's and basically the volcanic ash actually pre preserves the soft tissues uh, very well in terms of fossilization. And but even though like all like most hollow species go extinct, it's basically due to climate changes and and uh, and just basically new plant, just basically new plants and uh, just uh, 
just basically different kinds of animals to come in and actually kind of uh, eat all the plants that actually were actually kind of hard for insides of source to actually uh, actually feed through to actually eat. But the next now the next dinosaur we're actually going to talk about is Irritator, and uh, I know what you're thinking, and you actually were actually th kind of kind of thinking like uh, why would a dinosaur be called Irritator? Well. Believe it or not, it was actually a paleontologist that actually just got so frustrated, and he just totally just named it Irritator. It's because he was irritated. Get it? <laughs> I mean, I know it's kind of kind of weird to actually name a dinosaur uh, based on a on a feeling. You know, I mean, that's kind of weird, but um. But anyway, Irritator is actually found in South America, and it's a Spinosaur, and it's at, found in the middle of the Cretaceous 100 million years ago. 25 feet long, probably weighed one ton, one ton, and a it's a meat, it's a carnivore, and and it has a and basically with, like with this uh, model right here of of Irritator, you can actually tell that it is a Spinosaur basically from the long skull long narrow skull and uh, even though the the hands on this thing aren't pretty aren't pretty good even though it's still a, kind of a good model to actually kind of look at but um, like all Spinosaurus they're actually the they're actually one of the longest uh, carnivorous dinosaurs uh, that have been found but even though it's only 25 feet long so it's a relatively small uh, Spinosaur so it's pretty much not going to be as like big as like Baryonyx or Suchomimus or or its more famous relative uh, Spinosaurus. And so that, since that Spinosaurus are actually mainly found in South America, uh, Africa, and some parts of Indi India, so it would, it would actually be very easy to say that these are dinosaurs that probably evolved from Gondwana, uh, from the southern continent Gondwana. So probably this been basically theropods that actually just evolved in like the different uh, kind of uh, shapes. And since that spinosaurs are content by most paleontologists are considered to be more fish eaters uh, than actual like land-based carnivores are today, kind of like more of a terrestrial uh, uh, meat-eating dinosaur. It's more. It's was. Spinosaurs are very are very specialized. They're specialists in a term. They're specialists just because you see they actually live in a they live in environments where they actually have to be near water sources, B either big water sources, rivers, lakes, or even actually at the at the seas or oceans. They're basic basically, they probably wouldn't be swimming in the oceans. They'll probably just be like like be on the beach and actually just. Uh, and just uh, just scouring, just scouring for like a fish that's been washed up, or otherwise, uh, maybe go after like um, baby marine reptiles, and uh, and probably might have actually um, probably eaten uh, probably some pterosaurs too, because since that uh, there has been fossils found that that ter there's a pterosaur vertebrae that actually had a spinosaur tooth stuck in the vertebrae, which indicates that that pterosaur died from being bitten by a spinosaur. Now, even though the spinosaur didn't really totally eat the eat the pterosaur, so it's probably safe to say it probably just like nibbed at the pterosaur for a little bit, just for the for the good bits, and then just basically walked off to find more food. And since that irritator actually did live at the time when Gigantosaurus and Mapusaurus were actually the top predators, so these so. Irritator would not be the top predator uh, in South America during that time. So Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus would actually be the top predators because they're more terrestrial predators, and so they'll actually be going. So those two will be going after the sauropods and some iguanodontids, those kinds of those kinds of dinosaurs. Whereas Irritator is probably since it's more of a specialist, they probably just ate fish, probably ate some dinosaur uh, carcasses that actually been. Up at the rivers or lakes or otherwise, even if there's a dead marine, if there's a marine reptile that got washed up the shore, it would actually scavenge off of, off of a dead, off of, a, off of that too. So I would say that Irritator is more of a scavenger uh, in terrestrial 
uh, environments, but even though when there's a severe drought, it can hunt if it needs to, but even though it probably just hunt down smaller prey. Because when you have a longer snout, when you have a long snout like this, you're not really designed to actually capture uh, really big animals. So you're actually more on the decline of actually taking on the smaller smaller animals. So basically, irritator probably might actually kill like like baby guanodontids or otherwise uh, hatchling uh, uh, sauropods, that kind of thing. So, and since that um, that irritator is a spinosaur, probably probably because since that it does not have the expand expanded spines on the back it actually did have like a tall ridge kind of like a short ridge on the on its back but mainly probably just for display purposes so it probably might have been brightly colored uh, males would probably have been brightly colored uh, to show off to the females uh, saying that uh very interested in mating with you or otherwise um or otherwise for, if males uh, are competing for territory, so we may actually compete for territory for like who's the dominant uh, male for that territory. So that one that wouldn't be a bad idea. I've seen what the, that might not be a bad um, vision to see is like these these animals actually just fighting over territory from for most of the time. And of course, the extinction of this dinosaur is basically due to climate changes and also probably that. Giganosaurus and Mapusaurus were probably so dominant predators they actually probably actually move them out uh, when uh, when the ter when their terror when like uh, severe droughts actually came about. Uh, basically, Irritator would have probably just been like wiped out, due to, been pushed out of its territories. Uh, basically, for Mapusaurus and Giganosaurus for the water sources. So basically, if Irritator got into a battle between a Mapusaurus or a Giganosaurus, it's not going to win. It's not going to win whatsoever, because since its claws are not big enough, and also it's not even big enough itself to take on uh, Mapusaurus and Giganosaurus. So it's basically that it probably just probably just couldn't compete with the more uh, terrestrial predators. So it's probably, basically Spinosaurus couldn't actually compete with those with those terrestrial dinosaurs. It's, because, it's basically it's because the terrestrial uh, predators are basically are basically just gonna just they're just much more tougher they're actually they're tougher and also they're actually stronger so that actually might actually say of like how, how these spinosaurus probably died off in the middle in the middle cretaceous but even though i'm not saying that spinosaurus are weak even though spinosaurus are relatively strong and to their to their body designs they're actually still pretty good dinosaurs. They're still pretty cool dinosaurs to actually look at, though. All right, that's it for now. And uh, next week will actually be an extra questions episode. So if you got a question about, if you got a question or two about dinosaurs or other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or other ways you can actually uh, send a question on the Facebook page, Dinos uh, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris, in the comments section of a Facebook post. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at C S G R A L L. And because I post pretty cool stuff on Twitter. And also make sure to take care of the people around you. And also for younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for a good education. It's very important to have a good education. With a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, and I'll see you guys next week.